uh, is entrepreneur finance and uh, challenges uh, right uh, so uh, you know uh, this is a need of time we all know that you know uh, every time uh, we are running uh, you know academic institutes and uh, every year uh, you know students are getting pass out but uh, the fact remain the same that uh, you know uh, you we have to give the two choice to the students you know so uh, whether they want to become an employment uh, you know a seeker or whether they want to become an employment provider right and uh, if anybody will ask us the difference between these two and uh, you know to make a choice between these two so if it is possible in our life then definitely we always want to go for the employment provider right because uh, you know to work under someone is always sacrificed with our uh, you know personal choice and personal wish and you know personal freedom that is the most important aspect and that is why uh, you know uh, the craze of becoming an entrepreneur in the market is quite high everybody wants to do the you know some or other kinds of business even i have seen many people in my life also uh, initially they were doing the jobs and gradually they shifted uh, you know uh, for the entrepreneur because the simple reasons uh, you know for uh, you know shifting uh, from the job life to entrepreneur have many benefits in terms of the profit generation uh, you know the amount of profit that we are generating you know the work time freedoms that we have uh, you know the space of doing works are there you know the choice of uh, work that we want to do right so we enjoy our life and that's why uh, the preference of entrepreneur is always you know quite high in the market and uh, we are running in a campus so we also needs to motivate the students so that more and more employment uh, can be possible and if you study uh, you know the economical front of india at the very micro level so you know uh, in terms of the total gdp of india the contribution of msme sector is quite high and still government wants to you know motivate those sector so that more and more employment can be generated you know the gdp can be you know pushed up and the market will have the freedom of money circulation of money and so that uh, you know the purchasing power of people will get increased and it will be a win win situations for the market so yes uh, let me share the slide with this uh, brief introduction that why we all are gathered here and uh, you know the theme of the today's presentation that uh, entrepreneurial finance and uh, challenges that we all are facing uh, you know into the market so uh, even uh, whatever introduction that i have discussed is about the willingness of uh, becoming an entrepreneur but we all know that only willingness will not along with the willingness we need to understand and we need to give the importance to the certain criterias and out of all the criterias uh, that we look forward for the entrepreneur uh, you know finance and challenges to come out with the entrepreneur to come out with your own uh, business you know there are most important two things uh, which is required uh, you know to become an entrepreneur into the market and out of that the first important things uh, you know to become an entrepreneur uh, in the market is first you should have your own innovative ideas uh, you know to come out with the business into the market because when you are coming out to be a freshers into the market it is always a challenging task uh, you know to establish yourself along with the business which are already established into the market you know so uh, we need to think about every parameters but out of the most important parameter is why market will accept us as a part of entrepreneur this question must be answered before you enter into the market with lot of amount of investments you know because it is not necessary that if you are coming out with a business idea that always going to be successful but being an entrepreneur you should have this uh, you know attitude to bear the loss if it is going to arise you know so uh, you know it will go on uh, this side or it will be go on this side but you being an entrepreneur you should be ready that the risk factors are always there because if you are churning unlimited amount of profit uh, from your venture so you also needs to see that you also needs to bear unlimited risk into the market right uh, so this is what uh, the entrepreneur is and the second thing that i want I, i was talking about that to come out into the market the first thing is innovative idea is required and the second most important aspect that 
you should have your own finance if you have the innovative idea but if you don't have a finance i'm sorry to say but you have to sacrifice your idea you know the arrangement from the market is somehow or a little bit it is possible not completely it is possible i know why i'm saying this because there are few exceptions uh, cases in the indian scenario is always there but like a dhirubhai ambani but not everybody will become a dhirubhai ambani right so there are certain exceptional cases are there so what i am saying is not completely true but yes on a some extent it is there that even if you have the innovative idea but if you don't have a finance of your hand it is very difficult to establish your business establish your idea into the market because market is already well established and if you want to enter into the market you have to provide many good parameters into the market in terms of you know good idea good services uh, you know services in terms of the after sale services which is very important right so these are the things and facts are there and that's why there are many if you don't have your own finance then the questions will come how to get the fundings from the market to establish my uh, business so there are various financial options are available into the market that is the theme of today's conf, uh, you know national fdp program that is entrepreneur finance and to get those finances from the various funding agencies like bank and bfcs or any other financial institutions who are working directly or indirectly for providing the fundings what are the challenges that we being an entrepreneur needs to face into the market that we also needs to answer right so this is a theme for today that is, that is why we all are here today that is entrepreneurial finance and challenges so let's go with the slide the first we need to understand why business needs finance as i already discussed that if any idea needs to success into the market the most important parameter is the upscaling of your business the scale of business at which you are uh, you know you are operating if your business is operating at high scale definitely you have better choices of the products uh, that you need to provide to the customer right at the same time you know customer wants different types of products different qualities of products so you need to settle down your business in such a way when the customer will enter into your place they should not go out of your place they should get whatever they wants in your business but this is only possible when you are operating at very high level of scale and for this you know fundings you need a finance and that is why it has been said that uh, you know so this is sources of finance you know so sources of finance is uh, you know life blood of business so finance is a life blood of any sort of business without finance no business can sustain and that is why sorry to sorry to interrupt sir you have not yet shared your screen sir i have the not shared not yeah 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 okay 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 sorry yeah can i have please sir Yes, sir. It's visible, sir. Okay. Sorry, Thank I you. was not. Uh, yeah. So, uh, finance is a lifeblood of business. So, any business wants to sustain into the market, finance must be there. If finance is not there, business will not survive. And that is why it is very important for an entrepreneur that whatever sources that you are collecting from the market, you know, that should be utilized in a most efficient way. and if these resources are not getting utilized in an efficient way you know the profit maximization right which is an ultimate goal of every business and every organization should not be attained right so uh, being a prime requirement you always needs to understand that all the resources and you know efficient utilization of those resources should always be there and that's why it is important for all sort of business which is whether you are operating at wholesale market whether you are operating at retail market whether you are doing for export or import business whatsoever business in which you are but the finance and money is a prime requirement if the money is there business can survive if business money is not there you will always find a difficult level right because a market is not running without a money 
And that's why why entrepreneur needs the finance. So the core reason is to start a business in terms of startup capital. You know, so the uh, somebody may ask you, uh, what is the meaning of startup capital? So startup capital means initial push up, uh, initial kick start that we want to take when we are coming out for the first time into the market, right? In terms of uh, you know, uh, we have to buy certain kind of uh, fixed asset or you know fixed uh, things which is required uh, to buy to establish our business in terms of you know buying uh, office premises. We need to establish certain machinery if we are in manufacturing business or any sort of machinery is required for our business and all other necessary types of equipments. So these are the things which is required for us in the market. And secondly, once we have established our business into the market, even we are existing business into the market, you know, to run the business in a very smooth and efficient manner, the finance is must. And the reason why even in existing business, the finance is must because not a single day we can survive without finance because we need to meet up apart from the earlier point that we have seen in terms of, you know, capital expenditures that we need to do to establish our business. We also need to do, uh, you know, current expenses or you can say liquidate ex liquidity expenses in terms of, uh, you know, daily wages that we need to pay to our labor. Uh, the salaries that we need to pay to our employees, you know, so these are the various reasons or apart from these two things, there are various uh, operational expenses uh, which we need to incur on a day to day basis, right? So to mitigate those expenses, we need a fundings, which is called, uh, you know, current assets, you know, cash, cash in hands, right? So these are the various uh, technical terms which is given in finance. Uh, right. So these are the things which is required to run the business. And that's why entrepreneur needs fundings, needs finance. And to if you are going for expansions also, then also the fundings is must. Right. Without fundings, you cannot go for expansions. Right. So from starting to, you know, apply for licensing, uh, you know, to establish your business, uh, you know, to take the technical advices, to buy your land, uh, you know, to uh, make a furniture, machinery, to hire the employees every stage of your expansion you need a funding and that's why it has been said that whether you are going for horizontal or vertical expansion you have to have the proper funding in your hands and there are two expansion we are talking about horizontal and vertical so let me brief you about this what is horizontal and vertical so if we are in the existing business and we are operating uh you know we are going to establish our new office at some other place in the same business in the same industry then it is called horizontal expansion of our business and if we are going out uh, with although a completely new business in which we were not operating previously right and we are completely going out to try with the new business this is called vertical expansions right and here the note is that new business always finds it difficult to raise funds right so if any uh, company or any person who wants to become an entrepreneur for the first time, they always face a difficulty because they are not experienced into the market. They are just experiment to the market, right? So experiment might get success and might get failure. And that's why uh, to make your business successful, you need to face a lot of difficulties into this period, into your journey. And that's why we need to take care of this. And that's why, uh, you know, to repay the funds in case of failure of ideas. Right. So we also need to have certain kinds of provisions that if our idea will not work out, become an entrepreneur, then how to close down the business and how to make the liquidations of the business and, you know, to remove ourselves from the liabilities. Right. So this all plan A, plan B, plan C, being an entrepreneur needs to be ready as and when you are going into the market. Next, uh, we are going with. What makes entrepreneur finance different from other finance? So the basic reasons or basic assumptions uh, in this regards that no history is there to assess the risk in terms of beta, risk premium and many other parameters for risk evaluation. All those who are in finance, they must aware about it that in finance, whenever we are working for the future planning, 
we are assessing our previous history right what is our experience why if we are successful why we are successful if we face some difficulty or if we are failed then we also need to assess that why we got failure in the market but to assess such kind of results into the market we always should have our past history but when we talks about in terms of entrepreneur they are the new into the market and they don't have any past history and that's why this all terminology which is mentioned on the screen that is beta risk premium and many such parameters for risk evaluations are not available for the entrepreneurs right that's why their finances are uh, completely different from the other firms and second aspect is lack of parameters to compare with other industries if entering into a new industry let's suppose uh, if you are going to operate your business into certain area under which there are few industries which are not established there and if you are going to establish those industries over here so there might be some uh, you know no comparison for this particular location whether it is going to successful or not because no parameters to compare right so there is always a dilemma in your mind that whether i am operating this business over here and there is no market for this business in a particular location so you need to uh, you know ask yourself uh, whether this good business is going to successful in this particular area or not so these are the few questions that entrepreneur needs to undergo during their journey to establish their business third aspect is lack of availability of short term profitability results in predicting the future road maps you know so lack of availability of short term profitability means every frequent interval you know we should have certain history but in terms of entrepreneurs that is also not available and that's why uh, you know to make a strategy at the initial level is always a challenging task and that's why we always face the difficulty to predict our future you know to make a plan for our future and that's why it has been written we always face a difficulty in predicting the future road maps now we need to decide why it is tough fight between capital greed and opportunity so investing in new venture is a cyclical process that involves both ebbs and flows right so we need to understand that if you are going for any business and if you want to invest into those business so it is a cyclical process you invest you get a results you will make a thoughts again whether to invest or not and again this cycle work if you invest again again you will operate you will have a results you will have a profit sharing right so it's a cyclical process the money flow keeps going on right and it is based on completely the perception judgment and actions right when we don't have any past history right or we don't have any particular evidence for us in in our hand so majority of the decisions are quite natural that it is going to be based on the perception judgment and actions because we don't have any other parameters you know to make a base for our decisions whether to enter into the finance of this particular business or not right we must undergo the type of plan that entrepreneurs are bring out and if those plans are workable we are ready to invest into those ideas next what is entrepreneur finance now we enter into the main part of our fpp's theme so entrepreneur finance involves useful way of thinking about cash risk and value very important because we are not a job doers right that we have worked out and if it's a 5 pm or 6 pm our duties are over no because you are the ultimate financer for your business and you always need to think about uh, you know the way the market is going on the way the transformation has been taken place into the market and accordingly you need to generate those cash requirements into your business to mitigate those changes and to provide a satisfaction to your employees and to maintain a good quality of your products into the market so these are the few uh, you know basic ideas to sustain better way into the market and that's why you always needs to assess what sort of fundings that you are collecting from the market you always needs to assess 
how much amount of risk parameters have been evaluated uh, you know is there and then you need to make the values of this particular parameter if you have a cash risk and return then you can definitely provide the valuation of your firm right in finance there is a concept called valuation of business right so you need to value those particular parameters and that is why if you utilize those techniques being an entrepreneur it will help to identify the right questions to the right person and on the contrary it also find out the potential options right so let's suppose if i have three options into the market being an entrepreneur to enter into the market plan a plan b and plan c so i will use various techniques of finance in terms of valuations of business you know valuations of projects capital budgeting you know cost of capital so these are the few project finance techniques you know which help me to evaluate those projects and accordingly i need to decide the funding requirements for our business and that's why uh, you know to find out those answers you need to undergo with few questions in your mind being an entrepreneur if you are planning for you know establish your business so uh, you have to first answer that discovery driven planning right you search see the market see the trends if you find comfortable if you find the opportunity over this particular observation then you need to plan your activities right so this is called discovery driven planning and the second ops uh, questions that you need to answer that new venture strategy although you are completely new to the market then you always needs to make a strategy that how you will fight into the market how you will enter into the market you know what is your plan to enter into the market you have to make a strategy well in advance so that when you enter into the market you should not ask to yourself what should i do at this point of time right so this is not allowed being an entrepreneur you should be very fast you should be very quick you should be very accurate you should be ready to adopt the changes which has taken place into the market so these are the few characteristics that you being an entrepreneur must possess in you right so and there are three core principles of entrepreneurial finance if you are searching so the first is more cash is preferred than less cash right so obviously every entrepreneur is needed much amount of fundings into the market to operate them into successfully so definitely they need they should have the liquidity in their hands so that any unfortunate events will be taken place so they will be in a position that they will mitigate those uncertainties on time and accurately so yes more cash is preferred than less cash second option uh, being in principles of entrepreneur finance that cash is sooner preferred to cash later obviously should not uh, you know put our uh, needs of being an entrepreneur uh, you know to be get delayed if it is there then what happens if any point of time any activities get stuck up into the business it will di directly or indirectly affect to the entire organization in terms of the total cost and profit that we are generating and if the cost is going to increase then definitely it has a bad impact on the overall profitability of the business so yes cash sooner is most preferable than cash available on the later stage and the third aspect is it should be less risky right than more risky definitely no person wants to enter no person wants to put themselves on a so much risk factor you yeah, right you being an entrepreneur always needs to take a risk but when i'm using the terminology called risk i must needs to understand that those risk should be calculative right it should not be haphazardly otherwise it will hamper to me only and later on i need to pay the penalty for this in terms of uh, you know the failure of business in terms of loss making activities so this should not be that and that's why you always needs to go on those cash options if you don't have your own cash 
you need to find out those resources from the market which are less risky in terms of uh, you know overall uh, cost and other parameters of risk factors so this is entrepreneur finance uh, these are the things which you must need to take care if you want to generate your finance being an entrepreneur then finance strategy so these are the finance strategy uh, so first is degree of strategic freedom you know so and this degree of strategy freedom that you are generating uh, from the sources and deal structure so definitely we all know that if you are talking about uh, you know the various sources of finance so for entrepreneur uh, you know all know that the sources uh, the first is the equity finance equity finance means the finance which will be bring by the owner itself uh, you know so equity finance if the owner doesn't have the uh, you know ownership finance in a sufficient level at which he was looking for then he needs to enter into the third party finance in terms of debt finance so debt finance is not an entrepreneur finance is the apart from the entrepreneur finance so this is called owner's finance this is called ownership finance yeah so this is called ownership ownership finance clear and this is called third party finance right it is it is called third party finance clear it is called third party finance fine so uh, these are various sources in terms of uh, debt and equity and apart from this third party finance we can also go for uh, it is always a part of third party only not only debt finance but you can go for multiple sources right even you can take the help of your managers even if you can go for banks you can go for nbfcs right so there are lot of options but these are the funding options which always charge some or other way of interest amount it's not a free of cost and this interest amount is fixed this interest amount is always fixed at certain percentage at the time you are signing the contracts so this percentage is going to be fixed right so this is interest amount fine then you have to see this if you have the fundings then only you can make a finance strategy then only you can make the finance strategy right so uh, you have certain requirements of you know when to open the business when to close the business what should be the future alternatives uh, that are available for me even if i'm running with the existing business or even i'm going with the new business you know so these are the various concerns that i need to answer and at the same time we have to see the finance requirements uh in terms of the burn rate you know uh, what is burn rate so burn rate at which burn rate is very bad situation for the organization because burn rate means it calls the pace at which we are utilizing the reserves of the business right at which pace we are utilizing reserves of the business and it is not a good sign if the reserves are getting down that means the organization is running in a loss making situation so burn rate should always be on a lower side it is highly preferable for the business you know so uh, apart from that we need to identify the operating needs so operating mean, needs means operating expenses that we need to incur working capital requirements current assets minus current liability so uh, this parameters we also needs to assess that what are the total current assets that we have it in our business right now and at, on a contrary what are the current liabilities we have it and ideal position is that current asset should be greater than current liability then only we have a positive net working capital otherwise it will be turn into negative and negative working capital will leads to cash crunch right cash crunch means lack of availability of cash in the business which is not a good sign because if any unforeseen events will happen 
or any unplanned activities or expenses will arise into the business and at this point of time if we don't have the money in our pocket then it will be very difficult uh, to run those operations and anywhere due to this kind of reasons if our uh, you know manufacturing or other operating activities get stuck up ultimately it leads to uh, you know again i'm telling you it leads to a loss making and if such kind of things happens then this burn rate is going to high because burn rate is the pace at which we are utilizing our resource right so if we have a loss so definitely entrepreneurs liability is unlimited and this unlimited liability leads to you know pay the amount from your pocket and our pocket is nothing but the amount of reserves that we have in our business so being an entrepreneur you must take care that your burn rate should be on lower side so these are the financial uh, requirements and strategies that we need to answer and in terms of business strategy which is very common for all of us being a management and commerce people or in any field you are if any business wants to become a successful into the market they need to answer these parameters in terms of marketing operation finance and uh, value creations right so uh, these are the four options that they need to answer uh, you know marketing operation finance and value creation so we have to see these parameters okay so this is that then what are these other sources of finance uh, for the entrepreneurs into the market as i have already told you that friends family uh, you know so these all other sources if i'm talking about so other means other means if i'm saying others so other means apart from own finance and own finance means apart from equity finance right so all this finance uh, which is discussed over here these all are third party finance i hope it is clear so these are the third party finance which are not available with us but we are hiring or we are borrowing from others either uh, we are borrowing some money from friends at the cheap rate in comparison to the market rate either we can borrow it from our one family members at the cheaper rate other sources like uh, we can go for savings credit cards loans and investments right so if we are going for certain uh, you know loans and investments so if investments we are utilizing this is our own resources but if you are going for loan so we are taking loan from the bank so again it is a third party finance clear and uh, other sources from which we can take the fundings is uh, we can go for bank and bank will give us in terms of loans financial companies like nbfcs investment companies who are making investments and government grants if we are taking help of government grants like uh, if you are in msme business there are many other schemes uh, which provides the grants to the government or uh, you know various small businesses so if we are opting for this kind of uh, facilities then again it is a third party finance that's why uh, it is very important to discuss the difference between the debt and equity as a part of entrepreneur finance right so if i'm talking about the debt financing so debt financing for a new venture that consists of payback of funds Uh, need to take the money in terms of two aspects one is the principal amounts that i'm taking one is principal amount uh, that i'm taking plus interest i need to give it to back right principal amount plus interest i hope you all aware about it that is called emi right so uh, this is the amount that i need to pay if i'm going with debt financing right so debt finance is not only consist of uh, uh, you know the principal amount but it is always consist of interest payment as well understood yeah okay then just a minute then equity finance so <clears throat> equity finance is a ownership capital uh, which is also called a venture capital right ownership capital or you can say venture capital ownership capital in terms of uh, you know high scale and existing business it is called equity you know equity shares uh, or capital the terms that we are using 
but when we talks about uh, the new business which is coming out to be a fresh into the market for which we are using this terms uh, you know as a venture capital so fresh business in and fresh business leads to the entrepreneur finance clear so this is the uh, you know equity financing and debt financing in terms of the entrepreneur finance in terms of sources fine so if i need to bifurcate the debt financing uh, in terms of the entrepreneurs who are coming out into the market so what are the uh, opportunities which are available with them if they are going with debt financing and what are the disadvantages but before starting this i must uh, you know tell you one thing that this is the cheapest source of financing for the market this is the cheapest right this is cheapest uh, source of financing the reason is it only consists interest amount it is consist interest amount on fixed rate and this interest amount is exempted from the total profit as an expense so uh, you know tax exemptions are always available you know this is called tax shield benefit which is called tax shield benefit for the entrepreneur so due to these two reasons this source is called a cheapest source of finance out of all the sources even if we talks in terms of equity financing so this is the cheapest source of financing so every business wants to be have this sources in their own pocket you know because they have to pay less to the market and definitely you can utilize those fundings for that particular period of time and that's why if it talks about uh, the advantages of this particular things right then no reliquence of ownership is required so if you are uh, uh, you know taking debt financing from the market you don't require any sort of ownership payment into the market on the contrary if it talks about disadvantage of this particular financing is there so you know from the various people from which you are taking the fundings as a part of debt you need to pay in return the fixed interest rate to the you know concerned persons so regular payment irrespective of whether you have generated the profit into your business or not but you must needs to provide the regular payment of interest right on a fixed rate it should be uh, you know decided at the time of entering into the contract then second advantage is it increases the potentiality of return on equity of the shareholders with the more level of borrowings why see one example is that if we have 10 lakh profit if we have 10 lakh profit and there is one scenario that we have 80% equity capitals and 20% debt finance and another scenario is we have 20% equity people and 80% debt so what happens over here if you have 10 lakhs of profit so out of this 10 lakhs of profit though this is equity finance and this is debt finance so out of 10 lakh first we need to pay only fixed rate of 20% and out apart out once this 20% interest rate will go on whatever profit that has been left out let's suppose on a jumble basis i'm considering 8 lakh profit which has been left out to distribute on equity shareholders now if i need to distribute this 8 lakh rupees to 80 percent of the equity people then every person every person will get 1 lakh rupees of profit sharing this is one scenario i'm showing you the picture why it is cheapest sources and why it provides more roi if it is on the higher side now see this so here if i need to see the roi very less one divided by 80 right so it is nothing but if here i need to see the roi so here every person every equity shareholders are getting four lakh rupees as a part of profit sharing and if i need to convert into roe then it is 4 divided by 20 right so if i need to see this so this is 25 percent roe 
which is quite high in terms of the first scenario. And that's why every business are preferring that they should have more portion of debt financing so that the equity people will get more profit sharing and they will get they are more happy it's absolutely fine if you have a small family of equity financing but they should be happy family and that's why and that's where every company is creating their market image every company is creating their brand image in terms of stock market investments and that's why people are dying to buy those particular stocks you know to get the maximum profit out of this particular investment so this is how you know the demand and supply will be generated in terms of the profit sharing and on the contrary disadvantage and the second point so continuous cash flow problems are going to arise due to the problems of timely payment of interest amount. so this is an exceptional cases where you are going with a tremendous loss into your business and at this point of time, if you don't have the fundings, uh, you know, to mitigate those, uh, you know, fixed timely payment of interest amount, then you will face a problem. Uh, you know, you feel helpless at this point of time. So this is the major disadvantage of debt financing. Third is during the period of low interest rate, the opportunity cost is justified since the cost of borrowing is low. This is an example. This is an example which I have given to you that during the low interest rate, the opportunity cost is justified right let's suppose if this interest rate is low then you know to the 80 percent people you need to you know pay only less amount of fundings out of this 10 lakh rupees so less amount and high profit and high profit leads to high profit sharing and on the contrary it also motivate the organization to have the retained earnings this is a burning uh, you know out of which the burning rate was decided at the time of difficulty period that they should utilize their own retained earnings to mitigate those loss so every business needs to stay healthy when they have more results in terms of retained earnings and then third point for uh, debt financing is that heavy use of debt can hinder the growth of organization so if organization is now motivated towards uh, you know high debt financing then what happens that market comes to know that they are not interested in profit sharing of equity share so you have to have the balance between these two approach right so people should not have the wrong impression of your company that they are only profit minded and they are not believing into sharing their profits so this is also uh, we need to take care of it right then okay So uh, commonly used debt financing, commonly used debt financing. So first is trade credit. So for business, which type of business uh, you will get it for startup finance. So the startup business will get this trade fundings, uh, trade credits. Existing firms can also get trade credit. And in terms of financial term, if you are talking about that, whether trade credits are available for short term uh, medium term or long term so this is the answer that it is available only for short term not for medium term and long term commercial banks financing so yes sometimes they are providing with uh, strong ideas and for existing firms is always available based on their past history in terms of their income tax returns and for bank short term financing frequently they are providing yeah right cash credit or any sort of uh, overdraft Intermediate credits are also sometimes and uh, long term they usually do it because loan providing is a major business of the banks. Financial companies, they are also providing uh, for both the firms, new and existing. And short term financing. So yes, all sort of financing uh, are available for financing companies. You know, the other factors, we are not entering into it. Leasing companies, yes, for startup, they are doing it. They are ready to invest as a part of you know venture capital and so on and existing firm always for short term financing it is not available and medium term to long term but medium term is mostly available long term occasionally they are providing and mutual fund saving banks and loan association so for this for startup seldom they are providing and existing firms for real ventures real estate ventures only they are providing rest of the industries they are not touching upon 
and short term and long terms are not available and that's why because it is in real estate so obviously they will uh, you know invite the long term financing only right so this is a nutshell of uh, the commonly sources available and types of fundings available for the entrepreneurs and for the uh, existing business in terms of you know the duration of finance which are available work with them so that according to the requirement of the fundings they can approach to the market and they can fulfill the requirements of that business so i'll not go into meaning of equity finance due to lack of time so uh, uh, i hope uh, we have already covered almost everything right so it is ownership finance and profit sharing are always there so this is a structure uh, but let's start with the the challenges so these are the challenges which entrepreneurs usually triggers out into the market to get the funding so first is access to capital so assessing capital can be significant challenges for entrepreneurs especially if they lack of credit history obviously if you don't have a past history market doesn't know you because you are known from your financial records so being an entrepreneur if you are coming out for the first time it is very difficult for the market also to believe in you right so at the initial level all the entrepreneurs are facing the issues for the fundings risk of failures right so market don't know whether you are going to successful or not so people will think twice and thrice before investing into your idea so definitely they have the fear of getting failure and that's why uh, uh, you know risk of failures are always there high interest rate right because you know that nobody is ready to pay you into the market so market uh, you know creating a demands for their uh, fundings so obviously you initially needs to enter into the loans or any sort of venture capital that you are looking for so you need to enter yourself with the high risk of uh, you know high rate of interest once you establish yourself you can have the multiple options uh, to get the fundings from the market but yes at initial stage you need to sacrifice at some level cash flow management uh, you know so managing cash flow uh, including uh, ensuring that there is enough money to cover operational expenses is always a challenging task as i told you in the uh, previous uh, presentation slides that everyday expenses should be mitigated and they should not get stopped if they stopped entire manufacturing chain will get stopped and if manufacturing chain get hampered the cost will badly happen and it leads to you know bad effect on the profit generation activities so we have to take care of this parameter market uncertainty obviously these are the external parameters on which no person have the direct or indirect control over that so this is called uncertainty of the business and we always needs to ready in terms of creating some or other amount of reserves you know so mitigate those kind of uncertainty then investors relations so uh, you know we have to raise a capital to equity financing may face a challenging in managing relationship with investors and maintaining control over that business right so we have to maintain a uh, relation with the investors and then after regulatory compliances so complying with financial regulations and tax requirements can be a complex and time consuming many a times it might happens that we need to hire a chartered accountant for this kind of complications right because there are certain laws of income tax and all this and it is not uh, you know compulsory that every entrepreneur must be uh, you know so well educated in terms of all the income tax and financial glitches so Uh, anywhere you have to file your return on time to you know avoid such kind of penalties so uh, you have to respect those regulatory compliances but again it's a challenge for the entrepreneurs and for which they needs to pay the high fees to the chartered accountant or financial experts or for financial planners then seasonal cash flow some kinds of seasons required if you are in seasonal business so you need to identify the demands for this particular seasons well in advance and accordingly you have to make the financial plannings being an entrepreneur competitions for fundings yes if you enter into the market and if you feel that the nearest competitors are uh, you know operating their business at the high scale so might be you need to upgrade your skill skills to provide better facilities to the customer and to do that you always needs to struggle because you don't have your much past history so yes definitely you have to come out uh, from the small things to the bigger one so it's always a challenge and then bootstrapping the limitations as we already seen that there are a lot of limitations that you are uh, you know first time entering into the market 
and this kind of uh, limitations will hinder your growth but as an entrepreneur you always needs to find out your own ways to come out with such difficulties and you know make yourself successful into the market so these are the challenges that we have faced and uh, this is what's from my side uh, the questions are most welcome from the audience thank you